Hello and welcome back to the video series about linear algebra. And in today's part 42, we will still talk about solving a system of linear equations. In particular, today's topic will be about the uniqueness of a solution. And similar to the last video, the rho echelon form will play a crucial role. However, before we start with that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. In fact, all supporters get access to my book about linear algebra. There, you also find exercises that should help you to understand the whole topic. Okay, then as always, let's start with a system of linear equations given as ax is equal to b. And now you already know, we have the Gaussian elimination to bring this into row echelon form. Again, here you see a rough sketch of that and you know the non-zero elements here in the corner are called pivots. At this point, you should recall the last video where we have learned that the solvability of the system is given by the zero rows here. More concretely, in the case that we have zero rows, we also need zeros here on the right hand side to get solutions. Hence, if there is a non-zero element here, we can immediately conclude that the solution set of the system is the empty set. Moreover, we also already know how the solution set looks in general if we have solutions. Namely, it's given as an affine subspace written as V0 plus the kernel of the matrix A. And with that, we can immediately conclude what it means to have uniqueness for a solution. Hence, all our knowledge here we can summarize for a proposition. So we consider the general case that we have a matrix A with m rows and n columns. And now we want to write down equivalences to the statement that the system Ax is equal to B has at most one solution. So you see, we don't talk about the existence of solutions, but just about the uniqueness if there is a solution. And for that reason, we will not fix the right hand side B here. There, please recall, in the last video, we have learned that the existence is crucially connected to the right hand side B. Therefore, in this proposition here, we now consider every possible right hand side B. In other words, we want that the statement Ax is equal to B has at most one solution is correct no matter which B we choose. Okay, so now we see, depending what B is, we are either in this case or in that case. However, please note here, if B is the zero vector, we already know that we are in the second case here. There, the solution set is equal to the kernel of A, which now has to be as small as possible. This means it should only contain the zero vector as a solution. So we see, having a trivial kernel is equivalent to the statement that Ax is equal to b has at most one solution, for every b. Therefore, we can remember that the uniqueness for solutions is completely given by the kernel of the matrix. However, now we also know that the dimension of the kernel was completely given by the row echelon form of A. More precisely, the number of free variables is exactly the dimension of the kernel. Therefore, the trivial kernel requires that there are no free variables. In other words, every variable is a leading variable. So this means in each column you find a pivot. However, of course zero rows at the bottom are still allowed. So it's not a statement about the rows, it's a statement about the columns. So you could also say the number of pivots is exactly n. However, we also already know that the number of pivots gives us the rank of A. Therefore, we immediately can write down the next equivalence as rank of A is equal to n. Okay, and finally we can describe the most abstract one by considering the linear map FA. So you know, it's a map that sends Rn to Rm simply by sending x to ax. Okay, and there we see the first statement exactly describes that this linear map is injective. Therefore, here please also remember, injectivity of this abstract linear map is connected to the kernel of the matrix. Okay, so in summary you see this is a very important statement about the uniqueness of solutions of a system of linear equations. And please note that the proof of all the equivalences we have already given in the discussion. 
So there's nothing we have to write down for the proof, but I want to tell you what this all means for square matrices. Indeed, if we have an n times n matrix, we can look at the row echelon form and we see everything gets much simpler then. So for example, kernel being trivial now means that we hit the whole space on the right hand side. So the range of A is equal to the whole space. Or in other words, injectivity is equivalent to surjectivity. Hence you see, the existence and the uniqueness of solutions is connected for square matrices. Simply because one of these conditions is already enough for having bijectivity of the linear map FA. Therefore you see, in this case, finding a unique solution for the system AX is equal to B does not depend on the right hand side B. Therefore, if we find a unique solution for a particular B, we can also say it works for all other Bs. So you see, this is a very nice statement and again, you can visualize that with the row echelon form. So if the row echelon form has this form, we know it's a square matrix, which means we can do the backward substitution no matter what is on the right hand side. Okay, and I would say for the moment we have said enough about systems of linear equations and how we can solve them. So in the next video, we start with something new and I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.